So, earlier today, Jason Schreier had put out a tweet linking to an article where he details what, what went wrong behind the scenes with Cyberpunk 2077, with the headline here on the tweet being, What went wrong with Cyberpunk 2077? Interviews with more than 20 current and former CD Projekt staff paint a complex picture. Unchecked ambition, technical woes, unrealistic deadlines, and above all, one belief. We made The Witcher 3, it'll work out, which... I haven't read this article yet, so for me, I'm going in with a blind reaction. To me, that quote pretty much says, we let the success of that game get to our heads, we became cocky because of it, and and as we all know now, that completely blew up in their faces, in literally the most absolute worst possible ways. So we're going to read this article, and I'm not going to show the whole thing, and I'm probably not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to show parts of this article. The rest I will leave a link to in the description below as always. So let's get to reading through this and probably skimming some of it. So inside Cyberpunk 2077's disastrous uh, rollout, developers say they knew the game wasn't ready to be released publicly. Gee, I wonder why. So let's see what there is here. Let's see what the fuck there is. CD Projekt SA Chief Executive Officer Marcin Illis. I can't pronounce that. Apologies. I can't. So, I'm not gonna even attempt to. Made a public... Me... Coupla. I'm retarded. This week about the disastrous rollout of the video game Cyberpunk 2077 in December. He took personal responsibility and asked fans not to blame the team. Which, I mean... I would hope most people not know not to do that. And at the end of the... Because, you know, in most cases... It's it's the higher up that, that fucks things up. It's, it's not the developers themselves. So, in a somber five-minute bullshit video address and accompanying blog post, this acknowledged the game did not meet the quality standard we wanted to meet. Really now? I think that's putting it lightly. I and the entire leadership team are deeply sorry for this. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you are. Alright, so I'm skimming through some of this so far, and something about this paragraph that really interests me is how it says uproar over the botched debut caused a 30 percent drop in cd project shares from december 10 through mid-january damn that's quite the drop off so you know don't fuck up a game launch i think that's pretty obvious i would hope that's obvious to game developers but when you drop a game make sure it actually works especially because you know just by default it should function it's like buying a car but without all the tires. It's like buying a car, but with the engine missing. It's like buying a car, but with the engine missing. Like, th there's no excuse. It, it should just work as intended. Interviews with more than 20 current and former CG Project staff, most of whom required anonymity, so as to not risk their careers, depict a development process mirrored by unchecked ambition, poor planning, and technical shortcomings. Employees to discussing the game's creation for the first time described a company that focused on marketing the game at, the, at expense of development, and an unrealistic timeline that pressured some working into extensive overtime long before the final push. CG Project declined to comment on the process or provide in interviews for the story. Gee, I wonder why. No idea. The Polish company will spend the next few months working on fixes to Cyberpunk 2077 instead of planning expansions to the game or getting started on the next installment of its other popular franchise, The Witcher, as they should, or in this case, shouldn't get to working on The Witcher just yet. Have it be Siri focused. You're not working on it yet, but when you do, and hopefully you don't fuck it up with this game, have it focus on Siri from Witcher 3, for those who don't know who that is. Best girl, focus on her. Anyways, the first new update will be released toward the end of January, and a second in the weeks after. This wasn't how the development team envisioned starting 2021. Oh really now? Now, instead of celebrating a successful release, they will aim to turn Cyberpunk 2077 into a redemption story. It will be an uphill battle. Unlike competitors such as Electronic Arts and Ubisoft Entertainment, CD Projekt only releases one major game every few years. So the company was lying on Cyberpunk 2077 to be a significant hit, which... That's debatable, depending on whether or not you decide to go after the quality argument or the sales argument. So, that's purely down to perspective, I would say. Okay, this paragraph interests me. A former audio programmer for CD Projekt said one of his colleagues asked during a meeting how the company thought it would be able to pull off a technically more challenging project in the same time frame as The Witcher. 
Someone answered, we'll figure it out along the way, he said. Figure it out along the way. I think he needed a little bit more time to properly figure it out, wouldn't you guys say? You know, just being honest, you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. For years, CD Projekt had fry thrived on that mentality. But, but this time, the company wasn't able to pull it off. No, they weren't. I knew it, was going, it wasn't going to go well. I just didn't know how disastrous it would be. Well, on a scale of Assassin's Creed Unity to Halo the Master Chief Collection, I would probably say uh, a Master Chief Collection with a side of Duke Nukem forever in terms of how long it took to develop. And yeah, all in all, it's, it's just been a shit fest. Duke Nukem, you, you could throw shit, so it kind of fits when you think about it. Part of the fans' disappointment is proportional to the amount of time they spent waiting for the game. Although Cyberpunk was announced in 2012, eight years of waiting, the company was then still mainly focused on its last title and full development didn't start until late 2016. So only four years of development around, pretty much, employees said. That's when... That was when CD Projekt essentially hit the reset button, according to people familiar with the project. So, it wasn't even a full eight years. It was really only four. No wonder it wasn't ready. They said fuck it and, and pretty much start from scratch. Like, wow. They completely restarted from scratch. That's it. Cut! Take two! Nope! Fuck it! Take three! Wow. Didn't see that one coming. Studio head Adam Badawiski. See, I'm fucking this up. Took over as as director, demanding overhauls to Cyberpunk's gameplay and story. Hmm. For the next year, everything was changing, including fundamental elements like gameplay perspective, top staff who had worked in The Witcher 3 had strong opinions on how Cyberpunk should be made, which clashed with what's his name, and led to the eventual departure of several top developers. Okay. So, disagreements with vision for the game. People could not get along. Everyone had different ideas for where they wanted it to go, but no one, at least with these top developers, could agree on that vision, so they left. So, the usual of what we've seen with higher-ups stepping down from roles. We saw this happening with Halo Infinite a few years ago. It happened recently last year with the previous CEO leaving. So... This is just a standard in the industry, especially for games with a very rough development cycle. So, I think that this is something a lot of people probably were thinking most likely happened as well. So, let's see what happens from here. Much of CD Projekt's focus, according to several people who worked on Cyberpunk 2077, was on impressing the outside world. A slice of gameplay was showcased at E3, the industry's main trade event in 2018. It showed the main character embarking on a mission, giving players a grand tour of the CD crime red in Night City. Fans and journalists were so wowed by Cyberpunk 2077's ambition and scale, what they didn't know was that the demo was almost entirely fake. CD Projekt hadn't yet finalized and coded the underlying gameplay systems, which is why so many features such as car ambushes were missing from the final product. Developers said they felt like the demo was a waste of months that should have gone toward making the game. So even more like Halo now! Halo 2's E3 demo? Smoke and Mirrors bullshit! The same thing here! This is history repeating itself with a highly anticipated game except this time, this game was in development for almost 10 years. 10 years. With a lot of that time being completely scrapped and restarting development. And it sounds like since they felt like they they wasted their time with this demo just to impress people, which that is not a good sign, that probably means even less time developing the game than four years, maybe three and a half? With how ambitious this shit was too? Yo. <laughs> it was announced way too early. God, this shit was... Ooh, th this was a, a complete disaster right from the start. The moment... The moment they initially uh, revealed it back in 2012, or not revealed and announced it back in 2012, is the moment they set themselves up for a complete disaster. Because this whole game, just like Fallout 76, has just been an ongoing disaster. 
it, it's probably not going to stop being a complete mess anytime soon. I think we're going to see months of this for at least, at least the next six months, I want to say. Maybe the next year we could see the story going on for, but, but at least for right now, the next several months. So, let's see what else there were. Uh, there is here. Employees were working long hours even though Ewin, I win, I'm calling him an I win. I win ski told staff that overtime wouldn't be mandatory in Cyberpunk. More than a dozen workers said they felt pressure to put in extra hours by their managers or co-workers anyway. Fucking crunch. Again, this just goes back to crunch. They completely rebooted the game's development on top of having people crunch and or at least feeling pressured into doing it because, you know, we, we gotta get this game out. Think about The Witcher 3 and how good that was and how it came together. We gotta do it again. And so it led to a lot of people just being in what is probably, for them, one of the worst career choices they've ever made. There were times when I would crunch up to 13 hours a day. Oh boy, that's healthy. Sitting on your ass 13 hours a day, developing games, staring at a screen. Very healthy. A little bit over, that was my record probably. And I would probably do five days a, a week working like that. Which is horrible. Like, you, you can gain major ar arthritis doing that on top of the other several health problems. You know, that, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg, so that's not that's not a good thing. It, it, can, it can lead to an early death, you know? Yeah, that's why exercise is, is so important. So, the former audio programmer adding that he quit the company after getting married. I have some friends who lost their families because of these sorts of shenanigans. So, man, that is not good. Probably all sorts of splits and breakups and whatnot. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I I feel so bad for all of these people. The overtime didn't make development of the game any faster. Really, no. At E3 in June 2019, CD Projekt announced that the game would come out on April 16, 2020. Oh boy. Had it come... Can you imagine ha it had it come out in April and not December? Oh my god, it would be so much worse. Oh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even be a pre-alpha. It, it'd be a... It'd be a pre in the fucking... It wouldn't be even, even be in the womb yet. It would just be a fucking piece of paper. It'd be a $60 piece of paper that, that you'd hold in your hands and, and draw on in order to make events in the game happen. It'd be a fucking book that you color, and that's what they would have delivered us instead of a game. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, back to reading this. Fans were elated, but eternally some members team could only, only scratch their heads. I imagine some probably had panic attacks. Um, wondering how they could possibly finish the game by then. Yeah, one person said they thought the date was a joke. <laughs> probably sounded like a, a late April Fool's joke. Based on the team's progress, they expected the game to be ready in 2022. 2022! So that's why on in the video, on that um, timeline of where the game is with fixes and patches, it showed up till 2022 because that's how long it would take for the game to be done properly so they sh he, he straight up told us in that video that apology video that the game should have been delayed till that year he told us that so that video wasn't even just bullshit it, it was honesty hidden within bullshit he indirectly told us the uh, the truth through lies and deception through excuses Wow, 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 okay. Developers created memes about the game getting delayed, making bets on when it would happen. <sighs> Boy, canceling features and scaling down the size of Cyberpunk's Metropolis helped, but the team's growth hampered some departments, developers said. While The Witcher 3 was created by roughly 240 in staff, staff bleh, oh my god, in-house staff, according to the company, Cyberpunk's credits show that the game had well over 500 internal developers. Jeez. But because Cy CD Projekt wasn't accustomed to such a size, people who worked on the game said their teams felt often siloed and unorganized. Major mismanagement, as so many people have been saying. Oh, man. This is exhausting. This is just exhausting to read. And I sound like a broken record saying this, but this is just business as usual. This is just the same old shit at this point. It's same shit, different day. Like General Shepard once said. Same shit, different day. That, that's literally all this is. 
we've seen this with so many triple a games at this point and we'll see it with so many quadruple a games as it's fucking called that's so fucking stupid ah games have major crunch and it needs to be stopped as it should be but enough with the quadruple a shit that's so stupid anyways at the same time cd project remained understaffed games like Grand Theft Auto 5 and red dead redemption 2 often held up as examples of the quality the company the company wanted to uphold were made by dozens of offices and thousands of people yeah there's quite a difference in developers there there were also cultural barriers brought about hiring expats from the u.s and western europe the studio mandated everyone speak english during meetings with non-polish speakers but not everyone followed the rules even as the timeline looked increasingly unrealistic management said delaying wasn't an option their goal is to release Cyberpunk 2077 before new consoles. Expected in the fall 2020 were even announced. That way the company would launch the game on existing platforms and double dip by releasing versions down the road for the next generation consoles. God, they really were trying to copy Rockstar. God, that really explains it. People who bought the old versions would receive free upgrades. Okay, so that explains that. External tests, however, showed clear performance issues, so he straight up lied in the video, which didn't see that one coming. Whoa, who, who would have expected that? So, min mismanagement prior to COVID on top of even more issues because of COVID. So that's that's just wonderful. As the launch date drew closer, everyone at the studio know that the game was from off shape and needed more time according to several people familiar with development. I think anyone with, with eyesight could see that. Literally, I think anyone could see that. Even a blind man could see that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Chunks of dialogue were missing. Some actions didn't work properly, as opposed to it working properly in-game. When management announced in October that the game had gone gold, that it was ready to be pressed to discs, there were still major bugs being discovered. Oh, golly gee. Oh, golly gee willigers. The game was developed another three weeks as exhausted programmers scrambled to fix as much as they could. Oh, oh, were they now? It needed more than three fucking weeks. Oh, th this is pissing me off. Okay, let's, let's just... Okay. When Cyberpunk 2077 finally launched on December 10th, the backlash was swift and furious. Players shared videos of screen overrun with tiny trees or characters gallivanting around without pants and compiled lists of features that had been promised but were not there in the final product. So, false advertisement on top of major and all-around terrible review embargoes. Excellent. This is great. I guess Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves being breathtaking could save this game after all, as they were probably hoping it, it would. Many of the game's glitches and graphical issues can be fixed, about per se, though it's not clear what it will take to regain a spot in the PlayStation Store. Winning fans back, back fans may be difficult, but there's a precedent in the video game world. Games like No Man's Sky, a space simulator, Final Fantasy... I'm forgetting Rome numerals. Uh, 14, an online role-playing game, and Destiny, a multiplayer shooter, recovered from rocky launches and earned critical acclaim by gradually improving after they released. And the market seemed to be hopeful. Seems to be hopeful. CD Projekt shares rose 6% the most in 6 weeks after the bullshit message. And that's it. Limit. Cool. So, there's the tweet again. And I saw this when I was uh, scrolling Twitter earlier today. You know who decided to respond to this, which let's read this out real quick. Why not? Let's add this to the video. Uh, you know what? Let's read what he has to say first, actually. I've read your piece in tweets. Thank you for the read. I have some thoughts. Okay, let's see what his thoughts are. Let, let's see what Adam has to say. Fans and journalists were wowed by Cyberpunk 2077's ambition and scale. What they didn't know was that demo was almost entirely fake. Make sense? It's hard for a trade show game demo not to be a tested vision or vertical slice two years before the game ships. But that doesn't mean it's fake. I mean, it kind of does, but okay. Compare the demo with that game. Look at the dumb dumb scene or the car chase or many other things. What the people reading your article may not know is that games are not made in a linear fashion and start looking like the final product only a few months before launch. If you look at that demo now, it's different, yes, but that's what the work in progress watermark is for. Our final game looks and plays way better than what the demo ever was, which, just by playing the game, you know that's not true whatsoever. And this is the same excuse Ubisoft would use, so for a fact, I know this is absolute bullshit. Because just because game development processes 
lead to changes over time and th i'm gonna sound like a, a an armchair developer saying this but just because a game development process change over changes over time does not mean that because you promise something people are just not going to not expect it there on launch if you expected this feature to be in the game people are going to expect it there at launch if you aren't going to clarify it's no longer there at launch for technical reasons then people would be forgiving but but if you aren't even going to explain that then no shit people are going to feel misled like pl do some thinking please like have some well some self-awareness and do a little bit of thinking please i'm not trying to be a dick just please think a little bit before you speak I i'm just being honest here as for missing features that's part of the creation process okay still completely misses the point of what the article was saying or did is and is deliberately doing it features come and go as we see if they work or not again clarify that also car ambushes exist in the final game almost verbatim to what we showed in the demo yeah my ass and if we get a bit more granular about our release the vision we presented in this demo evolved into something that got multiple 9 out of 10s and 10 out of 10s on pc from right from many renowned game outlets in the world which Let's keep in mind, this game, people were waiting for it almost a decade and was highly anticipated more and more as time went on. The hype kept on building to absolutely impossible heights. And so because of that, people are going to feel obligated to give it a 10 out of 10, even if it doesn't deserve it. And even if it is receiving multiple 9s and 10s, that doesn't make a difference. Just because it's received multiple scores doesn't mean that the game itself works for people who are not critics like sure not all critics are paid some yes and maybe not all are but it doesn't change the fact that this game regardless does not deserve those scores this is absolute bullshit so they mean nothing whatsoever just like how the game absolutely did, did not deserve a place in any top 10 or top 5 games of 2020 list so yeah um nah Fuck this. J just like the video, this is total bullshit so far. But let's keep reading. As for the old gen consoles, yes, that is another case. But we've owned up to that and are working super hard to, to eliminate bugs on PC2. We know that's not a perfect version either. And we are proud of Cyberpunk 2077 as a game and artistic vision. This is all. This is not what I'd call disastrous. What would you call it then? A fucking walk in the park and then a fucking trip and a slip on a dick? No. This is straight up World War III in gaming form. So what are you talking about? This is a fucking mess. This is a mess. And you know it. Does this dude lie this much outside of his job as well? Oh my god. D can you just be honest for five fucking minutes? Five minutes can you just please be honest when responding to controversy about this game? Please. Jesus Christ. Like, I get that you're a part of a company a part of a corporation that publishes their own games but jesus just be honest for five fucking minutes oh boy let's keep reading most of the staff knew and openly said it wouldn't be ready for release in 2020 you talked with 20 people some being ex-employees one of whom is not anonymous i wouldn't call that most for of the over 500 people staff openly said what you claim if listen if 20 people are all saying the same thing there's a very good chance that those over 500 people you claim that have not said a thing probably feel the same way. They probably also all agree that the game was nowhere near being ready and that the crunch was bullshit. It's just so many people are going to risk their jobs. And if a minority of developers are coming out and saying this, then clearly most people probably do as well. Man. Man. I'm not going to do this often for articles, but I wanted to do it for at least one video. You know, I'm not going to react to articles like this too often. I don't want to do it too much because you can literally do that with any article. And there's so many articles releasing all kinds in gaming every single day. Not even just in gaming, but in general. And most of them are shitty, but Jason's, in the case of something like this, are not. So I figured I'd make an exception for something like this. So, you know, Jason Schreier, he has his flaws, but, you know, he, he, he does good work. So I wanted to make a video about that. So, you know, it's like I said in the previous reaction. Y'all just gotta learn from this. And with your next project, when you finally get around to making it once this game is good to go, which 
won't be until 2022. It will not be until then, unfortunately. Um, hopefully the studio learns from this. Hopefully the higher ups learn from this. They learn how to properly manage their studio. Again, I sound like a broken record, but you know, stuff like this, articles like this, for example, it's it's important because you know it's a reminder of how a game development should not go. Let's see what happens in the future. Am I right? So not even a few months, over a year, or just a year now, depending on how far to 2022 they were referring to. So yeah, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I feel exhausted after reading that. <sighs> I need to eat something. All right, that's the video, reaction, whatever. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe for future content coming soon, as well as Turn on the notification bell and set it to all notifications, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, I'm out. Later.